Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500. I'm going to cover the ASX 200 and gold in a separate video, and I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. I've also got a couple of fascinating indicators to show you, so make sure you stick around for those. As always, this is general commentary and doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So let's kick off here with the S&P 500. And it really has been an interesting week. The um, S&P 500 has now run right up to the top of this downward trend line, which has been in place since way back here at the, the start of January this year. I didn't think we we're going to get here so quickly. I thought that you know, last week, I thought that we may have seen more of a pullback towards these moving averages. We did, we did start getting a pullback. And then that pullback was, was short-lived. We had Fed Governor Powell come out on, on Wednesday and talk about potentially slowing down the, the, the rate of interest rate increases. And that just set the market alight. And we've had that, that swift move upwards. So the underlying tone of the market really does remain positive. So let's, let's jump over to the four hourly chart and get a little bit more detail on the price action. So when we look at it on the, the four hourly basis, we can see that the markets had this, this rally of support. So this support band at around 3,900, it's been a significant area going all the way back to, to May. There's been a lot of activity around this 3,900 region. And, uh, and of course, that's where Wednesday's rally began from. And what's also been interesting over the Look, over the course of this rally from the October lows is that all the dips are being bought. And that's what you want to see in a, in a, in a constructive price action. You want to see the, the pullbacks being relatively shallow and you want to see buying interest coming in to underpin those, those pullbacks. And that's what we've been seeing. And the rallies have also been impulsive. So we, we had the impulsive rally here in early November, um, and then of course Wednesday's rally was impulsive as well, as as so are many of these rallies back here. We're getting impulsive rallies and then con corrective looking pullbacks. And another thing which was interesting in the price action over the last week is that the market broke up from this little triangle trading range. It's always interesting to look at the charts, look at the price action, and spot these spot these patterns. So this is your your classic triangle trading range. And what you can do with a, when you get a trading range is you can get a measured move and that gives you a guide as to where the market may go next. It doesn't tell you for certainty where it's gonna go, but it at least gives you a guide. Now let's just, so what you do, you measure the width of the, the range and then you project that higher from the breakout point. So you can see that gives us a level up around uh, just below 4,200. Another measurement we can do, we can do a different type of measured move, and that is using the, the, the base of the last upward leg. So I'm gonna use this point here at around 3,750. We use the, the peak of the previous run, come back to the, the low of the, of the pullback, and then that projects higher. So that would be like an equal length rally. And interesting is that it coincides, this shaded blue arrow coincides with the, uh, the, the width of the, the measured move from the triangle. So look, maybe that's saying we do have some more upside in this move towards 4,200, which also happens to be a resistance point, which I spoke about last week. So some interesting things going on there. I think that just going back to our daily chart, We've got um, coming out on Friday in the US, we've got the jobs report coming out. The question now is, can the S&P break higher um, above this trend line on its first attempt, or will there be some sort of consolidation? Do we get a pullback and maybe some more work before another attempt at, at breaking upwards in, in, a, in a week or two? So. I think tonight's report will give us some indication as to which way that's going to go. I think the uh, I think the play here at the moment 
regardless of what happens tonight, I think the play here is to, to hold long positions. If you've got long positions which have been established during this, this upward move we've had from the, from the lows, and this is something we have spoken about in previous week, if you do have those long positions, I'd be hanging on to them. And that said, though, I'd be hesitant to add to my S&P 500 exposure at this current point because we are, we are right at a resistance point. So buying at a resistance point isn't really a, a strong risk return or risk reward idea. And uh, when, when I look at the Dow, just going quickly over and looking at the, the Dow, it really is at the upper reaches of this resistance band. So this big resistance band are around 3,400, 3,000, oh, 35,000 roundabouts. Um, big resistance band, which is which the market's currently testing into. And I look at this, it's up 21% in six weeks. It's getting, it's, it's really stretched above those moving averages. To me, it just doesn't seem like an asymmetric entry point. I said the same thing last last week. We started to get a pullback, but then we had Fed Governor Powell's comments and the market shot higher again. But it doesn't change my view that I think this, this rally this rally needs to be checked. I think it needs to pull back at least a moderate pullback to give these moving averages time to time to catch up. That would be quite normal price action. And uh, so that's why I'm hesitant to be adding market exposure at current levels. I think, there, I think there's near-term limitations on how much higher this market can go. So yes, the, um, the price action is, is certainly encouraging, but I just don't want to get, don't want to get too excited too quickly. It's, it's really interesting, really, when, when you think about it, that when the market's running, it always feels like you don't have enough exposure. You're always thinking, oh, geez, I wish I had some more. I should have bought more when it was at lower levels. But you just got to remember how you were feeling at those lower levels. Just remember back, back six weeks ago, and people were just so fearful. People thought a crash was coming. I saw all these, these uh, chart overlays and analogs showing that we're going to have a repeat of the 2007 crash. And as you'd know, I spoke a long time about like how that was probably not, not the most likely scenario. Nonetheless, that's how people felt. So when you think, oh, look, I wish I had some more exposure, if you've got any exposure at all, I think you're really doing well. And one of the things I've said during, back during probably mid-October, I, I was saying I'd rather be a little bit right with some exposure than 100% wrong with with no exposure should the market start to rise. And that remains the case now. I think having some exposure, looking for good risk return entry points is the way to play this. And uh, look, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. And, uh, and please leave a short comment. Just, hey, thanks for the video. Helps heaps because it tells YouTube that people are watching and people are engaging. Then YouTube puts it in front of more people. And so if I'm going to make videos... I really want people to see them. So please do that. It helps me so much. Also, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you get notifications when, when I upload a video. And, uh, and yeah, please do that. It really does. Yeah, it means a lot. It means a lot to me if you can please do that. Now, let's move on to a couple of indicators of interest. Uh, first one. First one is the number of S&P 500 stocks above their 20-day moving average. Mm -hmm. And we looked at this a bit last week, and it remains, remains, remains this pretty much the same sort of situation today, but I just want to look at it from a different perspective as well. And this is one of those other things which suggests to me that maybe, maybe the market can pause uh, before breaking through the, this, this trend line, which we have. So, of course, I've got the S&P 500 up here above, number of stocks above their 20-day moving average below. And... What we've been conditioned to, to expect over the last, last 11 months now is when this indicator gets to a high point, it tends to coincide with sharp declines. But that's not always the way. It's always important when you look at an indicator to look back in time, look back further than the last 12 months, see how it's performed over different parts of the cycle. I want to draw your attention over to this point here. This is coming out of the... Um, of the, the COVID, COVID decline. 
So I've just marked these three points here. So on each occasion, you can see the number of stocks got up above 90%. Number of stocks above the 20 day average got up above 90%. Look what the market did at each, each occasion. Very different to what we've been experiencing this year. It resulted in pauses and mild pullbacks. This is the sort of thing which I think could, could potentially happen maybe over the next, next week or two. Of course, I don't know, but we're just looking at indicators and trying to interpret the price action, trying to see what could possibly happen. Uh, there's also the possibility that we saw during, um, on this third, third time it triggered back in 2020, it stayed locked in this position for several weeks and the market continued running. So of course there's no guarantee that just because this indicator is high, the market has to pull back. It could break the trend line and continue running. That's not my favorite view, but it's one of those possibilities that of course we need to be aware of. And that's why I say if you're holding positions, I think you want to keep holding them. You don't want to be too clever, try and take profit, try and buy back at a lower level because the market can sometimes run and you jump off the bus just as it pulls out for another, another run. So really interesting what I think happening in, in this indicator and with the Dow so far above those moving averages uh, that I was showing you over here, I think the, the scope for a pullback and, and seeing this indicator come back, the number of stocks above the 20 day moving average pullback, I think that possibility is, I think it's increased. So now I've got one more indicator I wanna show you and this is, this is a really interesting one. It's, um, looking at the market again from a different perspective. This is a number of stocks above their 50 day moving average. And what, what this one's all about, so let me explain what's going on here. So there are a couple of trigger points with this. Down here, this lower black line, that represents 10%. So when the, the indicator falls below there, it's telling you less than 10% of stocks are above their 50 day moving average. So that's sort of like, um, yeah, it, uh, it, it, it starts the triggering. It starts the triggering process. And then the trigger's released when the market gets up here to more than 90% of stocks being above their 50 day moving average. Now I've marked the times, and this is going, this goes back to 2010. This is far back as the, um, the data I have goes. I've marked all of the occasions when we've cycled from less than 10% to more than 90%. That's represented by these blue, by these black black vertical lines. So you can see there's six occasions and there's actually seven if you include the current one because it's just triggering again now. What you see, like what you see is like initially you might think, oh, it's it's up above 90%, so the market's it's going to pull back, so the market's going to pull back. But that's not what this is one's all about. This is telling you about market breadth. It's telling you about the underlying strength of the, the internals of the market. What tends to happen once this triggers with going from 10, less than 10 to more than 90%, look what the market does. It tends to continue rising as it has um, on these previous occasions. It doesn't necessarily rise the next week. You can see here there's a pullback, then the market continued rising. Uh, but that's the, the general trend that you see. It leads to further gains. Here's a, an aberration from the, from the series because it triggered and then the market pulled back and retested those lows. But now we're getting that another signal now. So it's, um, look, this is not uh, um, some sort of a magic indicator which guarantees the market's gonna go up. I'm sure some people are gonna leave me a comment saying, hey, the macro environment is actually different now because the Fed's tightening, it's not easing. And that's true. It is a different macro environment. And, but the thing to remember is that this is just, this, is, this isn't about macro environment. This is just a market indicator of breath. And we're using that to try and get an idea of how strong the internals of the market are. And also, it's just one piece of a puzzle. What we're trying to do, we're trying to bring many pieces of a puzzle together. And at this point, I think there's a, enough technical evidence to, to justify main, maintaining some sort of market exposure and also looking for potentially some, some further upside over the over through December and into January. But we're always assessing this price action on a on a week to week basis because it is a very fluid situation. So hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully you got some interest out of that. And uh, I look forward to coming back and talking to you again next week. Thanks again. Bye for now.